Hi, my name is Mark Biernot. I'm a monetary economist. Right now, the Federal Reserve is doing something super cringy. I just, it's total cringe. What is it doing? It's doing what it always does. It tries to stabilize the aggregate price level. CPI, aggregate price level, stable. They believe expectations and business planning and consumer expectations fall into line and we have money macro equilibrium and a greater tomorrow. I do believe in a greater tomorrow based on innovation and technology. However, the Federal Reserve stabilizing the price level is coming from incorrect monetary theory. Let me explain. There used to be a classical gold standard. This was in the 1800s. All was well. Then central banks were created. And they, you can argue various reasons why central banks were created. And I like to hear your input because I have my own theories. But once we severed the link between physical assets like silver and gold and money, and we became on a fiat currency system, the central bank would have to develop an economic theory that would explain why what they're doing is in the best interest of society. Now, some of that theory was based on people like Irving Fisher, John Maynard Keynes. He was the ultimate stabilizer, aggregate stabilizer. Then Milton Friedman, who was certainly no fan of uh, John Maynard Keynes, and Hayek were proposing stabilization of, uh, you know, currency and really money neutrality, which is a different idea. And modern economists, whether you take, you know, uh, Alan Greenspan, Janet Yellen, the current presidents of the Federal Reserve. They took that and interpreted this money neutrality as aggregate price stabilization. Two different ideas. Two completely different ideas. So for the rest of our existence, we're left with a Federal Reserve that's trying to stabilize an aggregate price level. Why is this incorrect theory? It's incorrect because you can't stabilize an aggregate price level without winners and losers. If prices should fall, which I believe they should, like in a deflationary scenario coming in the future, because increased productivity, increased trade, increased efficiency gains, let them fall. When prices fall in every single case, according to the laws of supply and demand, either two things happen, demand stays the same, or demand increases. Okay, they're gonna tell you it decreases, but think about supply and demand curve. When you stabilize the price level, you're not letting these prices fall. When you don't let these prices fall, it dampens demand. It dampens aggregate demand. It's the opposite effect of what you want. The market should determine the price level. Prices should fluctuate. Just like if you go uh, and pump your car with gas, it fluctuates daily. There's a reason it fluctuates. You know, maybe the price of pizza fluctuates. Maybe, maybe housing prices fluctuate. There's a reason it responds to market conditions which are so complex and beyond any econometrician sitting in, you know, an office with a title. It's because people... Again, the collective unconsciousness of humanity, entrepreneurs, demanders, suppliers, they determine the price based on the laws of marginal utility. When you stabilize the aggregate price level, and, and sp specifically in our case, in a vibrant, growing, great economy, and not let it fall, that dampens demand. And I go back, again, every single case where prices fall by the laws of supply and demand, demand should increase, right? So this cringy policy by the Federal Reserve, I can't describe it in any other way than cringy, is really wrecking havoc with the U.S. economy. What comes next? I do believe in a brighter tomorrow. But I do believe business cycles happen between these peaks to peaks. Asset prices go up. And we know who that benefits. So 
Price stabilization, the stabilizers, any economic textbook will tell you this is a good thing. I'm a monetary economist. It's a bad thing. Knut Vicksell, 1898, interest in prices. Initially, he was a stabilizer. In the early 1920s, after the Davidson uh, Vicksell polemic, he was convinced prices should vary inversely with productivity. So the Federal Reserve is incorrect. I'm sorry to say that. And probably your economics teacher and your textbooks are incorrect. My hope is people realize the laws of supply and demand, when prices fall, demand should increase. Think about it. Gasoline falls, people are going to take more vacations. Flights to Europe fall, people are going to go to Europe this summer. Right? Hotels fall, people are going to stay in more hotels. So let the prices fall. Let technology do its magic and its pixie dust and work on the economy. And Federal Reserve, try to stay out of economics. My name is Mark Burnett. I'm a monetary economist. Thank you very much.